question for you. What can you add to a bucket that makes it lighter? Today we're going to talk about the importance of quality wires. Segway! So today I want to talk about the tech, I suppose, of quality wires. What makes them quality wires? Why do we use the type of wires that we use in the RC industry? And what to look out for when you're buying wires, which unfortunately is going to be trustworthy sources versus, let's say, Amazon. So to start out, let's just show you a few different types of wires. What I use on all of my products, what we sell on our website, is going to be considered silicone jacketed, silicon, sil silicone, silicone jacketed, high strand count, and in pretty much all cases, plated wire. So we, we have a few terms going on there all at once. Uh, let's start with the jacketing. Uh, you can put different jackets on wires, the insulator itself on the outside. Silicone is extremely flexible. It also has a really high dielectric constant, I believe is the name of the term. It has good insulating value per thickness. So it is used in the RC industry. Why? Not because of its resiliency to cutting, not because of uh, cheapness, it's because it's extremely flexible. You can, you can see, let's, let's just, it's extremely flexible. Maybe the red shows up better on camera here. Uh, I believe it was, uh, was it Dean's that used to sell a wet noodle brand wire that literally is like a wet noodle. Maybe they still do. Let me know in the comments. Um, so that's one reason, but also extremely high temperature resistance is another reason to use silicone jackets. It's not as high as Teflon coated wires, the uh, TPFE, I believe they just call it that. But there are Teflon jacketed wires, which mm, hey, I got some right here. Uh, it has a higher temperature resistance, but it not, it's not nearly as flexible. So you can see I straighten this out, but it's been sitting in this coil for uh, years and it just pops right back. And the only way to get Teflon wires to straighten out is either to over bend them or to actually heat them up until the wire plasticizes on the outside. Uh, so for an RC car, that's not really need it. It's not a good idea. You want your your wires to shape easily. You still need the heat resistance. Uh, so silicon, silicone jacketing is usually the best choice. Wire strand count. That's the next thing we're going to talk about. The strand count of a wire is literally how many little bitty strands are on the inside. So as you can see with this, super flexible. Hey, I, I'm, I'm, I just tied it into a knot but when I untie it, because of the really high strand count, it doesn't keep a memory, at least not much. So you can see that there was a little bend where I did, a, did that hard knot on the edge, but otherwise it's still extremely flexible and it doesn't, you know, like I can make it have a kink in it, but it comes right back really easily. Let's compare that to a single strand. This is an extreme case. Uh, this is actually PVC jacketed wire, door, doorbell wire, the jacket is not heat resistant. The strand is only single. So you can see, look at the memory that this has. You know, you, you bend it once and it just stays. It, it, it's, if I put a hard kink in this, let's just try it out. Uh, I'm, I'm going to hard kink it, bam, a little 90 degree. And oh, I go to bend it back out and that kink is still actually in there. So extreme case, this is stranded, or I'm sorry, non-stranded, single core wire, it's sometimes called. If you're buying random wire for your RC crawler, you probably don't want to use this. Now, I have seen quite a few people use uh, car audio wire in their crawlers. There's actually nothing wrong with that. A lot of the times they will either be silicone jacketed or it'll be like a PVC or vinyl jacket, which doesn't have heat resistance, but it'll still be flexible enough. It will be stranded. In a lot of cases, it will actually be plated wire as well, which we're going to talk about here in a second. Uh, so really the biggest thing for a crawler, uh, since there's a lot of like vibrations and, and things like that, besides the nice wire jacket, you, you really want to do a high strand count. And unfortunately these days, Nobody sells like telling you what the strand count is. So it's just going to say, you know, high quality stranded wire or whatever. Uh, so it's kind of like a buyer beware thing. But I can tell you right now, if you're buying it off of eBay or Amazon from a vendor who is extremely cheap, you're, you're probably going to get extremely cheap wire. I've bought 
22 gauge before and I get it and it's 26 gauge. It's printed 22 on the sleeve from Amazon um, on the actual wire itself. It is printed 22 and then I go to measure it both with resistance and with a diameter check and it's 26. Uh, so like the JST wires that, that we provide and we, we sell on our website, um, you know, the, these guys are 20 gauge. They're a real 20 gauge and it's not 26. It may have even been 20 gauge that was listed on Amazon and then it came in, it was 26. Uh, yeah, extremely disappointing for me because, you know, I wanted some nice JSTs. Our direct power servos can pull eight plus amps, 10 amps. And it's a big difference in speed and power when you do a wire that's not actually thick enough. So you always want to make sure that you're buying quality. And if you don't, then, you know, market, let people know, do, do something at least. But this is why you stick to trusted vendors in the industry. Unless, you know, if you really don't care about performance, then don't even worry about any of this talk, but there's that. So the next thing we are going to talk about plating. And I can probably just show you on this particular wire, this is not a plated wire. I don't know if that'll show up as being non-plated, but it's a non-plated wire. It's straight copper. And there are a good bit of wires out there that you can find. They're the cheaper ones and they're non-plated. What's wrong with just straight copper? It is a really good conductor, yes. However, it will tarnish really quickly, extremely quickly actually. And the tarnish doesn't have very good conductivity. So what will happen is uh, in particular with, with a lot of stranded wire, the single core, it's really not a big deal because you can still solder to the tip of it. Oh yeah, I can see visually that this is already, yeah, it's, it's already started to oxidize. Um, Lost my train of thought. Shiny, shiny. Um, if it's a stranded wire and it's not coated, what will happen is you get some moisture, you get some oxygen inside the wire, and the oxidization, the rust essentially, will get on the inside of the wire and it will convert your nice, low resistance stranded wire into something that is more high resistance. Now, if you get it wet in particular, uh, any of these stranded wires, you get the tip of it wet and it starts to soak water all the way through the inside. Um, it's actually one of the reasons why a lot of motors are technically sealed, but you really can't seal from water all the way around because water wicks into such tiny spaces, whether it be the junction in between your bearing and your shaft, or whether it be wires that are going to the inside of the motor. I don't know if I have any, uh, I don't think I have any to show you of that design right now, but a lot of lower cost motors, they have the motors going directly inside. So the the wires just love to wick water up and in and it, when whenever you heat cycle a motor it pulls and pushes and pulls and pushes same for an esc um, on this particular the mama x2 mama x micro 2 mama micro x2 <laughs> they actually have solder cups that go into their waterproofing far far better idea than having the wires soldered directly onto the board because what would happen over time is that water would wick into these wires. It would go all the way down to the board and get underneath that waterproofing. So I don't know if Castle kind of knew this on the outset, or maybe this was a much more cost effective way of manufacturing, but the way that they have done it here with these like short bullet cups that sit on the board, they can waterproof all the way over those cups. The wires get put into those cups, soldered into the cups, and then you essentially have to wear, well, if the water wicks in from up here, it's gonna just stop right there where it transitions into that solder cup and you don't have any problem with it getting wet underneath the water coating over time. So uh, that's just the action of the stranded nature. I know I got off point of uh, the, the coating. So let's get back to that. All of these wires, uh, all the wires that we carry, everything that I have that is made is coated. And I'm not sure if that's gonna show up on the video, but you can see it is silver. And it's not actually silver coated, it's tin coated. And that prevents oxidization for the most part. It'll still oxidize over time, you get it into salt water, all bets are off. But that will, that'll essentially keep it from getting oxide on the inside. You keep your nice low resistance to the entire length of the wire. You keep your nice flexibility through the, through the entire length of the wire. And you don't have to worry about you know, down the road. I know with some car audio installs, I've, I've personally had it happen to me. 
I used acid core flux, knowing good and well that it was gonna give you problems down the road. It wicked into the multi-stranded wire and the multi-stranded wire was not coated, it was straight copper. And in about two years, the, the wire just completely ate itself from the inside, uh, inside the jacket. So, you know, I was having some stereo problems and I went to pull on the wire and whoop, it just came right off. And that was a combination, of course, of me being a dummy with acid core, uh, solder and also it being a non-coated wire you know the, the, the acid doesn't really affect the tin as much as it does copper so you know just uh, something to be aware of something to be aware of the the, the strand strandedness the tinning of it the, uh, the jacket it all adds up to a much nicer experience for the RC world obviously because if you have to replace your wires on your motor every two years because of corrosion it's kind of a bummer it's a really big bummer, uh, especially if you go out there a lot and get into water and stuff like that. So, all right. So if you do have any more questions about wires, leave them down below. I'll do my, my best to get to them or I'll make another video about them. But, you know, hopefully that explains a little bit about what makes good wires in the RC industry good wires and at least what to look out for on there. So I, I'm sorry that I can't give you more suggestions on, you know, hey, these are the brands to not use versus these are the brands to use because it's really always changing. But at the end of the day, sticking to known name brands in the industry, uh, any of the big name brands that aren't just kind of fly by night or uh, you know quick Chinese reseller style brands, they're pretty much always going to have that nicer quality wire because they understand as well some of the differences uh, between the stranded, the non-stranded, the jacket, the the tendedness, the coating of the wire, all those things really do add up. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you do have any questions, once again, leave them down below. And thanks for tuning in.